That's a complete lie. Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm going to give you some more tomato tips. My name is Rose and I'm here to tell you a little bit about tomatoes. Today's tomato tips are going to be all about tomato roots. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how tomato roots form and how they form on cuttings specifically so that at the end of the video, I can show you how to root your own cuttings to clone and make more plants for yourself. I'm going to clarify some tomato myths that are widely spread. I'm really passionate about tomatoes and have been my whole life. And with a background in horticulture and botany, I really focus in on the science of growing things more so than others. So despite tomatoes popularity and being one of the most common plants that people grow in their backyard, they are so often misunderstood. The sad thing is, is that almost every article or video that you read or watch is telling you a lie about how tomato roots are formed on the stem. That's right. I'm here to clarify the science behind rooting tomato cuttings. Unfortunately, it is something that even very experienced longtime gardeners get wrong. You'll often hear them say that the hairs on the stem of a tomato turn into roots. That's a complete lie. Stem hairs do not turn into roots. The hairs on the stem are actually called trichomes. Trichomes are the tomato's natural defense system. They are a hair-like structure on the outside of the epidermis of the tomato stem, leaf, and flower. While trichomes have a host of amazing abilities, they will never become roots. Not even one of them. What they can do is pretty awesome anyway. They play a multitude of roles, and tomatoes have multiple types of trichomes on them. Some are glandular and some are non-glandular. They can sense touch and movement around them, and they protect the plant from pests and disease. They help with temperature regulation, making plants more cold tolerant, and they act as a sunblock to make them more heat tolerant as well. And best of all, they produce essential oils that give tomatoes their wonderful tomato smell. Do you ever finish working on your tomatoes, whether you're trellising or pruning, and get this on your fingertips? I've been pruning tomatoes this morning, and the stain stays with me until I really scrub my fingers clean. And the smell also stays with me. That is the essential oils produced by trichomes. Those wonderful oils can actually repel some pests. So if trichomes don't make roots, despite all their other superpowers, what does create roots on a tomato stem when you trim it for a cutting? Well, you see, when a tomato stem is submerged in water or laying against the ground in, or buried in soil, this prevents gas exchange, which causes an oxygen deprivation. This sends a signal to the plant through a chemical reaction to begin producing advantageous roots. This helps the plant survive because of the gas exchange that they've lost, they're now able to use through the function of roots. Advantageous roots are different than primary roots. Primary roots are formed underground at the start of the plant when it's formed from seed. Whereas advantageous roots form on the stem, they are formed from a multifunctional cell found in the xylem and the phloem underneath the dermis of the tomato stem. This is further evidence that the hairs located on the external part of the epidermis could not possibly be responsible for roots that form under the dermis. And you can see this with your own eyes. You do not need a microscope for this. If you look at a plant that has started to produce roots on its stem, you can see it splitting through the dermal layer and coming out from the inside layers. Whereas the trichomes or hairs are on the outside layer of the epidermis. These multifunctional cells are called parenchyma. The parenchyma cells will start to divide to form primordial root cells. These primordial roots will form under the dermis in bumps along the stem 
And this is where your new roots actually come from. I feel that this is very important information to understand and to know so that you can truly succeed and be the most successful gardener, especially when it comes to rooting tomato stems. Lots of people cut the suckers, or lateral stems as more properly called, off of their tomato plants. Many times, gardeners will root these to form new plants, which is called cloning. So if you want more tomato plants from your existing tomato plant, I will show you how to clone them from cutting. First, you will choose a good healthy size lateral stem. Four to 10 inches is about right for me. Some people are able to do it with smaller or bigger, but those are the highest success rates that I find. You wanna make sure that it is from a healthy disease-free plant. Do not take cuttings off of anything that has already shown signs of disease. You're gonna cut at the stem with sanitized blades. Whether you're cutting with a knife, scissors, pruners, just make sure that it is well sanitized. You want to keep your cutting point clean. You're going to trim all of the lower leaves off and then you get to decide between two different methods, either rooting in soil or rooting in water. So you can put those cuttings into a vase of water and leave it in a shaded location for a week or two and when you go to pull it out it will be covered in roots. Then you can plant it in a nice location in your garden and keep it watered while it transitions from being a water cutting to a soil cutting. Some people have a lot of success by taking those cuttings and putting them directly into the soil. I think here in Georgia, we have such high heat that when I do this method, it's already too hot for those tomato plants to succeed that way. So I haven't had great success doing that way. I find it much easier to root them in water first. You will want to keep the water fresh and clean if that is the method that you choose to use. So that's it. Easy peasy. Now you have new tomato plants formed from your original tomato plants. Keep in mind that these are clones. So if you took your cutting from a Cherokee tomato, you will have a Cherokee tomato cutting and that will be what grows on that new plant. I hope that this myth busting has been helpful for you and that you have learned something new about tomatoes. I really enjoy teaching people and helping them learn new things, especially when it comes to science-based plant knowledge. That is really something that I enjoy helping others learn. And I really enjoy talking about tomatoes. So if you have any questions about growing tomatoes in your garden, leave it down in the comments and I will answer it right away. So thank you for watching. Please check out our other videos. We have lots of gardening videos. We also have videos about our homesteading and farming adventures as well. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check us out. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. Good job, Rose. Good job. I hope this mic worked. I really hope this mic worked.